take you now to the Supreme Court uh, where we have an address by the Ghana Journalists Association and the Judicial Service. People from, like, from um, distant poles, but rather we work together to achieve a common end. And so, um, in the light of all that Mr. Afelmoni said, which was quite extensive, I'd just like to add my voice to his to encourage us to continue doing our work to the best of our ability and reduce the excesses that have sometimes characterized our reportage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gloria. I want to invite uh, Primpark, the private newspaper publishers association, and the vice president, David Tamaklo, will speak for Primpark. Thank you very much. Um, as from Primpark, uh, we also wish to lend our support to the GJ and Giba uh, on their effort to encourage journalists to discharge their work responsibly. Of course, we all know that our presence here is a demonstration that we are part of the governance system. We are, as media, the fourth estate of the realm. All of us work, contribute to building the country. So let's go about doing our work. Let's do it responsibly and ensure that we are not, we, we abide by the rules of the ethics of our profession and also have in mind that we have the independence and the freedom of the media and go about our work uh, without any fear or favor. If there has been any moment when the bar has been so much of assistance to the media, it appears to me it has been this period. Almost every one of our media houses has had the privilege or opportunity of one lawyer or the other helping us to understand what is going on before his lordships and helping to explain to the people of Ghana. On this occasion, we want to thank the bar through the president of the Ghana Bar Association, Mr. Anthony Forson, and then we would want to invite Tony also to share a word with us. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. First of all, I would like also to express uh, gratitude to the media for the coverage of the election petition. My special thanks go to the lawyers who availed themselves and their knowledge in explaining what transpired in court. Of course, there have been one or two excesses, and I'll use this opportunity on behalf of uh, all the lawyers to render an unqualified apology if there be one needed to all the authorities uh, involved in the discipline of lawyers. Indeed, after the elections and throughout the petition, tempers were very high. And as much as I believe that every lawyer is endued with the ethics of the profession, sometimes some considerations would make you slip here and there. As human beings, even in court sometimes, we even forget some of the issues and uh, we ask for amendments. So I pray that uh, whoever may have said something untoward towards any person as a lawyer, I render an unqualified apology. Going forward, I will ask that all lawyers, after hearing the judgment tomorrow, will lend their intellectual power to the media and to the general public and show leadership in explaining what people do not understand. That is what we have been trained to do. Definitely, I will not ask anybody to go one way or the other. Every lawyer is an independent thinking person and uh, has his own considerations. But in as much as possible, let us all be guided by the ethics of the profession, such that at the end of the day, Ghana is the better for it, so that we may not have the opportunity or the, uh, the infamy of having to 
explain ourselves to anybody for things that we have said or failed to say. Once again, I thank you for this opportunity and I encourage all lawyers to help in the development of this great country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tony. Perhaps what some of us may not know is that there are a number of people from law background who from day one have been in the trenches with the media in the fight for free expression in this country. Tony played his role by spending time to teach at the Ghana Institute of Journalism. And uh, I think we need to place that on record. And that is still the theme I want to explore in relation to our next speaker. If you never had the opportunity to observe what led to the freedom and independence that we are proud of today, the people who fought day and night at the personal level, sacrificed, suffered professional consequences for their actions, was a young man then called lawyer Yoni Kulendi. If you know any justice of the Supreme Court called his lordship Yoni Kulendi, it may well be the same person. It appears to me that today is a day that we can also publicly acknowledge your contribution to media development and to thank you. But we are thankful to the CJ, the Judicial Secretary, and the Judiciary that on such an important day, they nominate you to join us today as a known friend of the media as somebody that the media consider inherently their own. And uh, we are glad that you are here with us and uh, we would want to invite you to say a word on behalf of the judiciary for us. We welcome your lordship. Um, it's good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, I had to ask, um, the, the landlady on this premises to, to join me um, because the judicial secretary is the one who looks after all of us here, even, even the justices of, of the Supreme Court. And, and first of all, our mandate is very simple. A lot of you will realize that in the common law tradition, judges are very conservative. So judges don't speak. Judges don't address press conferences like this. Um, you know, fortunately, we, there's a lot of change coming, and it's refreshing change. That is why we allow cameras into the courtroom. We, there's, there's an effort to constantly engage with, with yourselves as the fourth estate of the realm, because you form the intermediary between the courts as trustees of the people's power and the public. And so you take out the information, you inform, you educate, and sometimes you actually entertain. His Lordship, the Chief Justice, um, my Lord Justice, Kwesi Enini takes your role very seriously. A lot of you, or some of you, may have noticed that right from the onset, in a very unusual step, he gave me permission to go into media houses, sit in front of cameras, and to explain the work of the election review committee and the election manual, which the judicial service has put together that sets out all of the rules, all of the case law, everything, and puts it in one simple reference point. The reason His Lordship the Chief Justice did this is because he considers your role key he considers your role important. He considers your role indispensable. And therefore, um, my lady, the judicial secretary, and I have his instructions to convey to you his gratitude, his appreciation for the role that you have played right from the reception of, of, of that manual through to the commencement of the hearing 
I mean, day in and day out, you have been here under these canopies. They don't give you the best of comfort and convenience. But true to your duty as journalists and for the love of country and the Ghanaian people, you have endured in this partnership. His Lordship, the Chief Justice, sends his gratitude, his appreciation, that he appreciates your role. We are partners in this together for the greater good of country and people. Now, number two, as my brother said, um, the reason we are here is to say that we are at a watershed and God willing, tomorrow, the court will speak. When judges speak, that's the end of our role. Um, it's not our place to get into studios, into debates, into commentaries, and to explain. That responsibility falls to you as the anchors who take information out. So if you inform, you can also misinform. It's the responsibility of those of you as the media who educate. If you educate, you can miseducate. And that is why, you know, it for, if country will do well, if we will go forward, if our cohesion will be maintained, a lot depends on you and the professional circumspection introspection and reflection and care that you bring to bear on your role as the anchor that takes the information out. I couldn't say it better than um, George did. You will have to take this phase of the responsibility very seriously. It's as important as the role you have performed in transmitting the proceedings worldwide because at the end of the day, the Ghanaian people own the process. And it, it's important that they understand what went on and that when the judges speak, irrespective of our preferences, our likes and dislikes, by the rules of engagement, the referee blows the whistle and the lots fall where they fall. And so let's be constructive, let's be proactive. And His Lordship has said, I should tell you that as trustees of the people's power of justice, we are willing and happy to be criticized. Criticize us as violently as you can, but for Christ's sake, don't insult us. Don't berate us. Don't speak hatred. Don't malign us. Don't because like yourselves and the work that you do and the heart that you bring to bear on it is a similar responsibility. It's a similar consciousness with which judges embrace their work. As a lawyer, I thought I knew judges. I spent my whole life in these buildings. And I mean, they're not, I can say in all humility, there are not many lawyers who have spent their time here as I did. And I thought I understood it all. But in the transition I have made, I have come to appreciate the complexities, the difficulties, the challenges of being a judge. And, and the, 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 sometimes the sleeplessness that you go through in making sure that you can take a decision that you live with in your conscience and that you are true to your oath. And so, by all means, criticize us because you are the owners of the process. We are just trustees and agents. But let's be circumspect about vile, improper, unfortunate language. I mean, I, I have read things said about judges and every day I look at myself, I look at my wife and children, I say, hey, this is what I have volunteered into and say, wow, if this is what journalists and the Ghanaian public think of judges, then did I make a mistake? But I can say without a shadow of doubt that more often than not, those conclusions are unfortunate. They are flat out wrong. It's a human institution. We have our own imperfections. But commitment to country and people is unimpeachable. It's in no doubt. And therefore, we're counting on you that in the constitutional structure that we have, the judiciary and the media are partners if this country is going to move forward. And His Lordship is counting on you to be that constructive, to be that positive, by all means be independent and critical, as we as judges 
intend against all odds to be independent and true to our oaths. But in that process, let's all remember that it's for the greater good of Ghana and the Ghanaian people. So once again, on behalf of the Chief Justice, um, we're grateful to you for the great job, for the sacrifices, for the endurance, and we're counting on you for the next phase when the court finally speaks tomorrow. And um, as the uh, judge says, there'll be resources available. If you have, you require clarifications, by all means, make recourse to the bar, make recourse to lawyers, get all the explanations, and let's by all means properly inform and educate the Ghanaian people. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to posterity. We must do this and do it right for the greater good of Ghana. I'm very grateful. Thank you for coming. And, and thanks to the leadership of the media here. My special thanks goes to President of the Bar for the, uh, for, of the, uh, the GJA for the leadership that he has shown for Giba, for Prim Prague. And um, of course, the President of the Bar, my own brother. We are still learning to relate to each other where he sees me as a judge and I see him as a lawyer. Don't put that in print. <laughs> uh, but but we, we, we're grateful. His Lordship is very grateful and he's looking forward to an even more engaged collaboration with the media because without you, it's not going to happen in the way that we all want to see it. So thank you very much and keep up the good job and God bless you and may God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. Thank you. So, we are coming to you at this stage. But before then, let me make an announcement following from what His Lordship said. Together with the Ghana Center for Democratic Development, we are going to run legal clinic virtually. This is how it works. We know that you are working with a lot of lawyers and the, as the president of the bar said, we are grateful to those lawyers and also thankful to you that you seek expertise. In addition to that, what we hope to do through this process is that anybody who has any question regarding any point of law in relation to your attempt to understand the judgment can send that to us we will run a virtual seminar for all interested media houses and as i said we are doing this in partnership with the ghana center for democratic development so on that note we want to come to you for any questions or comments or clarifications you may seek from us. Okay, so in the absence of any question, we want to thank you very much for this opportunity. Or oh, is there? Okay. Pardon. Yeah, so we want to thank you most sincerely for this opportunity. And uh, all of us are going to be available for any uh, post press conference clarifications. If you want to call us after we've left here for anything, please feel free. Thank you very much for coming. I want to thank His Lordship, uh, Justice Plenty. Well, you heard there uh, some members of media um, associations here in Ghana, GJA, PrimPAC, and also we heard uh, from President of the Ghana Bar Associ Association, Anthony Forsen, and Justice Yoni Kalendi. And this is a joint press conference ahead of the Supreme Court's judgment on the 2020 election petition. And you know, here as always, we are your election headquarters and we bring you the very best with regards to anything election related. And so do make a date with us tomorrow for the Judgment Day. Here on News Desk, though, we'll take a quick breather. When we come back in business, we'll be telling you about how food processors are complaining about the hike in May's price.